Hmm. I am going to make uh, start making some videos about why I believe this moment is so significant because of the children around the world and the way this pattern of events match many significant biblical uh, accounts. Okay, that's why I'm sitting up and paying such close attention. Uh, there's something to me that as soon as you you notice this, you just you know you can't unsee it. The connection is so strong. Okay, so there's going to be three scriptures. A scripture from Jesus, then a scripture in Revelation, and then a scripture in Isaiah. So the scripture in, where Jesus is speaking is in Matthew chapter 18. Okay? And the um, it says, starting in 18, I'm just going to read it. At the time, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a child to himself and set him before them and said, Truly, I say to you, <clears throat> unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones, okay, who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Now remember, the Bible says of Jesus, carefully concealed in him is all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now why is this statement of Christ so significant? Well, Revelation chapter 18 speaks about the great millstone, okay? And it speaks about a city, a great city, Babylon, the harlot city. And it speaks about, it says, God has pronounced judgment for you against her. Let's read this, verse 21. Then a strong angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence and will not be found any longer. Wow. And what was the pronouncement that Jesus said would happen if the children were to be stumbled. Mm. And what brings Babylon down? Like being thrown in the sea with a great millstone around the neck. S such a profound indicator for recognizing where are we in the cyclical, repeating, historical pattern timeline that synchronizes with the pronouncements of God, the creator of all that is. Let's look at Isaiah now, which is a prophecy of this beautiful time. Isaiah chapter 11. Now verse 6 is what I want to focus on. It says, read the whole thing, it's significant, but it says, and the wolf will dwell with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little boy will lead them. Hmm. I wonder where the children might lead us. Oh, perhaps, as Jesus said, into the kingdom, into the kingdom of God itself. Okay. It is such an obvious spiritual clue is why I wonder is why we haven't noticed it with more clarity, okay? Because 
What's also extremely important is when Jesus mentioned this about the children, the men were asking about how great they would be. <laughs> so here we have the ego, okay? And uh, this is something I really want to uh, bring to our attention because slowly with time I've begun to notice this more. When we read the Bible, what can happen and what often happens is, and what has been very much encouraged, so don't feel bad, okay? This singular focus, okay, trying to tell us it's the only meaning of the scriptures, okay, is, is all about this, this little single perceived self as being saved and being great and, and all this grandeur, okay? Is that really what the Bible is about? Is that really what the Bible is about? Might not be. Because we're made in the image of God. And if you look in Genesis, that word image is reflection of. Okay. So the Bible has the ability to hold a mirror up in front of our own existence, into our own perception. Okay. And give us a reflection. Okay. That, that's what the Bible can do. Okay, because we, sure, there's a part somewhere that notices it's alive and it doesn't really have any memory of anything before being alive. It's got this point of perception of existence. And so there's a very strong nature. And this is what I do believe is embedded in the scriptures. Okay. Starting with Cain and Abel. There are so many deep uh, uh, metaphors reflecting the conceptual nature of man. How man perceives himself. How man uh, prioritizes his self, his will. All these snares and entrapments that we potentially can fall into, okay? And imagine that the Bible is just speaking about little old me surviving as I perceive myself. But maybe it's about a much bigger story of survival. Like how about the survival of all of life, okay? What about the survival of all life on earth, okay? The continuation of life, okay? The continuation of the, of the species of man, okay? And uh, because we're mortal, okay? Now, just because we're mortal doesn't mean we have to die, okay? It means we have the ability to die. And I've thought a lot about this, okay? And I've come to realize there's a lot of deep spiritual inferences, assumptions, projected conclusions on what it means to have everlasting life. You know, and then it's like, oh, well, that means you're immortal and you cannot die and you... You know, there's two ways to live. Yeah, there is two ways to live. We do know the Bible does speak about God, you know, having, you know, immortality. Or being the source of life, okay? And so I just want to revisit just because we're mortal, okay? and have the ability to die does not mean we're obligated to die or have to die. And the existence and the continuation of our mammalian body, 
and and its vitality and its vigor and how long it operates and how long it functions according to the scriptures before the flood of noah was hundreds and hundreds of years so what's really causing us to have such short lifespans all of this needs to be revisited but i would say for a certainty from my perspective Jesus is telling us, pay attention to what's happening to the children. Because in the scripture in Isaiah, okay, in 11, something else where it speaks about, and the little boy will lead them, okay, to me, that's what's happening now. With, you know, we're waking up to the, 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 the danger the children are in okay and I want to really talk a lot about this because then it says and the cow and the bear will graze their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox the nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra and the weaned child will put his hand on the viper's den okay and at that moment they will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There is such clear, clear, clear marker for for a pattern here for us to see, okay? In fact, when I said that and took this out, it was exactly at 1144. So it's it, it, this that's how profound this number of the Fibonacci is in the Bible. It's so profound you will just start seeing it everywhere. So as far as I can tell, we're at this moment. It's being triggered. It's an organic moment. And there's, there could be many interesting rabbit holes we go down when we analyze this pattern that's occurring. Okay? That's inevitable that I think is triggering uh, mer- many natural, even biological processes in our, our bodies to respond to this ex- impending um, danger okay but what I believe is also coming because of taking a stand many Christians probably an uncountable number of Christians are organically just simply coming forward and are taking their stand okay now what really caught my eye is for sure there's two natures in the human condition Okay, there's like a line, and some of us, it's easier for us to fall into selfishness and the spirit of Cain, which is that aggressive component that is more connected to the instinctual survival, you know, response of fear and all that. Okay, that is our legacy as a developing uh, mammal on this planet. We have history, okay? But we also have this emergence where we have the capacity to be influenced by love, okay? So now what I see happening, and it's going to happen, is we are going to make peace with the predators. Because if you notice in Isaiah, it lists the predator, the wolf, the leper, okay, the lion, okay, the bear, okay? It's, it's... And those coincide with Revelation and the animals of Daniel. The predatorial uh, nature of the system that keeps emerging and dominating and causing this implosion, causing collapse, because we're not following the only wisdom that's proven to sustain us, okay, and carry us forward, okay? But... The fact that it talks about their young lying down together, okay? You see, we don't know how someone's going to choose to be. And because free will is part of the gift from God, we do need to create a society that nurtures to the optimal state of being. What is the true potential expression of us? 
when our children are born into beautiful, protective love, cared for, fed, nurtured, everything to the, you know, like, not baby, not pamper, not like spoiled, like they say, sp silver spoon in your mouth. No, I mean learn how to live and be connected and to be real and to be spiritual. What will the earth look like when our societies have that as the foundation of every decision going forward? That is the only path, as far as I can see, it, the Bible is telling us there is literally only one solution. And this attack on the children is the millstone that Babylon the Great has tied around her own neck. And it's every single person who is defaulting to a stance of fear, shrinking back into the shadows to conceal their lower nature that is influencing them right now.